The Conservative Party leadership race is in the news in a big way, but for all the wrong reasons. Hi, I'm Brian Lilly, political columnist at the Toronto Sun. By now, you've heard the news. Patrick Brown booted from the Conservative leadership race in a hastily called uh, meeting of the party executive committee that oversees the leadership. They said it's very serious allegations. They've said that it is something that they are referring to Elections Canada, possible violation of federal law. But what the allegations are, they're not going to tell you. Joining me now, Warren Kinsella, Sun columnist, longtime Politico, uh, a keen observer of these things. And Warren, I've talked to Patrick Brown, I've heard his side, but the party's still not saying what this is. Isn't that a bizarre stance for them to take? This is so serious. We have to kick out a front runner, but we're not going to tell you what it is. And you put your finger right on it. It's not like they kicked out Roman Bobber or Baber or whatever the hell his name is. I don't even know who he is. They've kicked out a guy that people increasingly felt had a legitimate shot at derailing the Polyev train. A guy who had a legitimate shot, as you wrote the other day, had a path to victory. They kicked that guy out. That's problem number one. Problem number two is they're not telling us why. And the people who signed up and paid their 15 bucks to the Conservative Party are entitled to know why. The people who indicated their support for Patrick Brown are entitled to know why. We don't know why. So it looks like, you know, uh, I don't know if it's the case, but it kind of looks like it's being rigged in favor of Pierre Polyev. You know, you always hear uh, that um, in stories like this, there's his side, there's her side, there's the truth, truth somewhere in the middle. Well, the party's not talking, so speculation begins to go. And we've heard everything from, well, uh, you know, City of Brampton employees were uh, being paid by taxpayers to work on the campaign. Uh, you know, developers were paying money for Brown's campaign workers. Um, that there were dodgy memberships. I spoke to, to Patrick Brown and he said, he told me that for about a week, the party's been asking questions, but the, the thing that saw him kicked out yesterday was simply this, that an anonymous uh, claim of someone who worked on his campaign was being paid by a company. The campaign's response was, well, tell us which organizers being paid by a company or who the company is and we can look into it and and brown said they wouldn't tell him he said you can't fight a phantom if that's accurate that's pretty weak sauce to kick somebody out of a leadership campaign on it's more than weak sauce it's shocking one anonymous complainant of what brown is saying is true one anonymous complainant is enough to kick these kick him out a front runner out and that, you know, Brian, this is something, to my knowledge, in my lifetime, that has never happened before in Canadian politics. Forget about the Conservative Party. I have never heard about something like this happening before. And fine, maybe the party has a reason to do so. Maybe they're justified doing so. But they need to tell people what are the reasons for doing so. Because now they've created the impression that they were looking to get rid of Brown and they were looking to install Pierre Polyev uh, in the leadership. And it, you know, all it, the only person that helps, the guy who's sitting there this morning with his mimosa smiling, Justin Trudeau. I, I can't disagree with that. I think this really does help Trudeau. And it, it, the fact that they're not, the party's not talking, that they're not explaining, well, it gives credence to those who think that this is about helping Polyev. Now, Polyev's camp told me that we didn't lodge anything against them. And I think you've seen the statement put out where um, a spokesperson for Polyev's camp says, well, Patrick Brown's always the victim, but he has a history of this. And, I, you know, look, they're not taking a back seat. They're not taking the high road on this, but no one's seen the high road during this, this leadership campaign. Who do you think it, it helps? The, uh, you know, my initial reaction is this does help Polyev because if, if a good number of Brown supporters don't vote, then Sheree can't get second ballot support from them if Brown ends up dropping off. Uh, but, you know, that's up in the air now. And, and the Sheree people are, are saying, look, we, we still think we've got a shot. And it's because people are increasingly leaving the other camps for us. We don't know these things. We, we have to, you know, do our best Kremlinology or tea leaf reading or whatever the case may be. Where do you think this uh, play, how it plays out? 
I think the simplest explanation in politics is always the best explanation. You know, Patrick Brown had a lot of momentum. You and I and others had written that he had a path to victory, that he was working hard. He had a legitimate shot. Getting rid of him benefits Pierre Polyev, period. You know, and how it works in terms of the cascading of ballots and second and third choices. I'm not very good at figuring that stuff out. I think basically this assists Polyev. But, you know, the, the entity, the person that it hurts the most is the Conservative Party. You know, the voters are not going to entrust the party to run the country because they are the only legitimate alternative to the Trudeau Liberals. They're not going to trust them to run the country if they can't run themselves. And they look like a total clown show right now. It is a three ring circus right now. But before I ask you about a, a really good news nugget that you've got, um, you know, we, we've got ballots that are out there already printed. They may have been mailed. We don't know. We're getting competing um, claims on whether they've been mailed out or not. And again, party's not doing a great job communicating, but they, they've at least got ballots printed with Patrick Brown's name on it. If people cast their ballot on that, do they count? You know, when Kevin O'Leary dropped out in the uh, leadership race in 2017, his vote still counted, but he dropped out. This is someone being expelled, <laughs> told that they're not allowed, uh, they're not qualified. So, you know, what happens to those? It, it's just, it doesn't look good at all. <laughs> it's a circus. I mean, it's great for guys like you and me. We love writing about this stuff. But man, does it ever look bad on these guys. It looks terrible. I had forgotten about the ballots thing. Uh, you and others reported they have printed up the ballots with Patrick Brown's name on it. My understanding is, I think CBC reported, they have mailed some of those ballots out. Maybe they haven't, but still, it's just like it is such a bad look. And if, as Brown says, this is all based on one anonymous allegation, well, you know, that cuts both ways. Somebody can do that on Pierre Polyev, because I got some information late last night suggesting that Polyev may be getting some support from some very suspicious uh, quarters. Okay, so for certain parts of the Conservative Party, they're going to hear what you're going to tell us now, and they're going to say, so what? I like these guys. But the Liberals will use this to excite their own supporters and scare swing voters. And I always, you know, keep trying to remind people, if you don't get swing voters, you're not winning. So what did you find out about the uh, support within the Conservative Party from the convoy movement? So uh, what I found out last night, I've seen the graphs, I've seen the spreadsheets and so on. There's two lists, really. There's the list that the Conservative Party has now given to the leadership campaigns. And there's that list that was leaked earlier about donors to the uh, illegal occupation, the convoy, the freedom group, whatever you want to call them of Ottawa. And so an analysis has been done of the crossover, who's on that conservative membership list and who is on that convoy donor list. There's nearly 2000 people who are current members of the conservative party who donated to the occupation group and the amounts they donated are close to $2 million. Now, you may say, well, that's not a big deal. Pierre Polyev, you know, was associated walking with them. He's proud to do so. But on February 5th, you know, various police agencies declared the occupation illegal. Many of those donations took place even when they knew the occupation was considered to be breaking the law. That, again, is a bad look for the Conservative Party. And the candidate who's most associated with that convoy group, Pierre Polyev. So 2,000 people are on that's, both lists? That's 17, 1,800, somewhere in there. And about $1.8 million was wow. donated. So what we're looking at, we're trying to figure out, you know, how many donated before it was illegal, how many after. Maybe I'm dancing on the head of the pin, but I'm trying to be fair to these people. Okay, well, you can make your donation before you knew it was illegal. But so, as soon as you hear it's illegal, you should not be donating to that group. And, and it looks like hundreds of them did. And that's you know bad look, because I think most of them are supporting Polyev. Well, I, I think the, the bigger thing is it becomes a, a, a media narrative talking point. It becomes ammunition for the liberals come the next election campaign. 
and nuance is not your friend in, in politics. And if you're explaining, you're losing. And if you have to explain, but no, no, this is fine. Well, you're only going to keep the support of people who already supported you or supported the convoy, and you're going to lose it of people who were turned off by the convoy. So I have to agree with it. it it's not going to work out well. Warren, great talking to you. I'm sure the drama will continue. We'll ask the audience what they think. Drop a comment down below, share this on social media, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.